you guys, I'm, just, I'm testing the audio here. I can't hear the music on my um, phone, which I'm trying to like, test the audio with. So let me know if you can hear me. And back back. Guys, I unplugged the audio and replugged the end. How does this sound? Am I still all glitchy? Hey guys, I restarted the system. Maybe it's not too glitchy now, let's hope. Yay! Okay, cool. I'll be on in just a second though. Let me just grab my yarn. Doki artichoke. Hello, guys. Ooh, it's kind of dark. One second. Man, I, I swear, I did a bunch of fixes. I tried to fix a bunch of things. There, let's do that one. There we go. But restarting it changed all the fixes that I made. Hi, guys. Sorry about that, but uh, we're here. And we're ready to rock and roll. It's all good. And hello, hello, hello. I see you all in the chat. Okay. So we got a lot to cover before we get started crocheting. So let me just start talking about everything. Here's the plan for this video. Um, over the weekend, uh, someone reached out to me on Reddit and wanted me to crochet them a triceratops, but wanted it to be a little bit different uh, to match a design that they really liked. So I remade it and it looks exactly like this one. I shipped that one out, but I remade it again. And um, this new frill on the top I thought was so cool, and so we had this live stream coming up, and I was like, you know what? Let's just do a live pattern. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be actually teaching you how to crochet a triceratops with this new frill pattern, 
and uh, and we're actually going to be going through the pattern itself, which means that I probably will won't be reading the chat too often at the very least for the start of the the video. Um, if you want to get the written version of this pattern, I will. Um, you can go to clubcrochet.com slash triceratops. You can see right there uh, on the screen. And if you, um, you have to be logged in with a free account. But if you log in with a free account, you should have access to the pattern on the members side of the website, which will have the written version of this pattern. And if you're watching this video prior to me live streaming, I'll put a time code in the description below, which will, um, which will go straight to the scene where I'm showing how to do the new frill because this pattern is exactly the same except for the frill on the top. Um, in addition to that, what was the other thing? Oh, uh, time code for you watchers. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to talk about the materials and then we'll talk about, um, some other stuff while you guys are getting materials all prepped. Um, if you want to help, if you want to crochet along and stuff like that. Okay, so today I'm using all worsted weight yarn, and I had a vote on what colors you guys wanted me to use, and you guys voted yellow. So I am going to be using yellow uh, for this pattern. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton in yellow and white. Um, because I'm using worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a pair of scissors, uh, a darning needle. I suggest using a crimped end darning needle like this so that the edge is kind of bent over. It helps you get in and out of pieces. Um, you'll need, well, looks like I forgot my eyes. Oh, actually, no, I have some right here. You'll need some safety bead eyes. Um, I'm using six millimeter safety bead eyes. I'm just going to take them out and get them prepped. And we'll see how long, um, if, how long it takes for me to crochet this pattern. Uh, if I, if it doesn't take me that long, I'll just do another one and we'll just crochet it along together where I won't have to explain the pattern as I'm going. That way we could just like kind of hang out. Let me put these here. Okay. So you need some safety bead eyes, um, some stuffing, and I think that's just about it. Uh, so go get those materials ready if you're if you're prepped. Um, and oh my gosh, Lizzie, you rock! So Lizzie just did a super chat there, and it's perfect timing because I'd like to talk about how you can support this channel if you like the the stuff I'm making. So I'll give you the little dance in just a second. Um, okay, so if you like this uh, my stuff and you want to help support this channel, uh, you can with a bunch of different in a bunch of different ways. So the first way is to become a Club Crochet member, and that's the best way. Um, Club Crochet members get access to a bunch of my other patterns, including all of these dinosaur patterns. So these are all the dinosaur patterns that you guys voted on this month. Um, and there are so many different ones. we got a Brontosaurus. We've ob obviously got Triceratops. we got a Stegosaurus um, and then a T-Rex. And membership, uh, membership accounts have access to extra patterns like um, the Stegosaurus, the Brontosaurus, and um, a T-Rex with extra features like a spikes and a belly, um, as well as PDF versions of patterns and stuff like that. You also get uh, materials mailed directly to their door every month. Uh, this month we, ha we are crocheting um, a bunch of mini dinosaurs, so you get all the materials to make these three, well, actually these three, dinos. So you'll get materials to make th uh, a T-Rex, a Stegosaurus, and a Triceratops. This was this month's pro kit. It's too late to sign up for this one, but it will be available in the shop. These these kits will be available in the shop eventually. Um, but this next month's kit is actually for a, uh, a Brontosaurus. So if you sign up before, I think, July uh, 29th or 30th, um, you'll get this month's kit, which is for a brontosaurus mail to your door. Um, it, yeah. So I, it's, it's really cool. I really like the kits a lot and uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I like a lot. So memberships start at only $5 a month. Uh, you can even get a free trial. Uh, and not only do you get access to a bunch of extra patterns, you get early access to patterns like this month we're doing Animal Crossing themed patterns. So you'll get access to this little mini bell bag this week if you have a membership account. Um, you can also support by buying patterns. So these patterns are also for sale on the site if you're not a member. So you can get like the Stegosaurus for only like three bucks. 
Um, you can also get merch. So there's a bunch of different merch. Uh, the newest thing is I've added a bunch of stickers for Stitch. This is the tabletop game that I uh, made. Um, you can learn more about it at stitchthegame.com. Uh, there's these professional hooker stickers. These ones are my favorite, personally. Um, I drew this when I was just uh, coming up with the idea of uh, the website. And I thought it'd be really cool to get this as a tattoo. And I will one day, when I can quit my job, I would like to get this as a tattoo somewhere on my body. Um, and there's anyone could be a hooker sticker. So this one has a translucent background. So all these are available. I think they're $3 on the site. You can find links to the description below. And the last way you can support is the way that Lizzie did. Well, Lizzie actually bought these a uh, uh, few of these stickers too, which thank you so much. But on top of that, Lizzie just did a super chat. So if you want and you're watching this live stream, there is a little button on the bottom right corner, a little dollar icon. And if you do that, it will um, you can support the channel. It's basically giving me a tip, and you get a little message that pops up on screen right here in the top right corner. Um, so thank you so much, Lizzie. Here's your little dance. I'm dancing to the Yoshi song. I don't know if it's timed right, <laughs> but I am. Um, okay, well, thank you guys so much uh, for joining in the chat. Let's get hooking. Let's rock and roll. So, uh, I'm gonna start by just making the horns for our little fella here. So let's let's move majority of these guys around. Make sure we're not in camera too much. Here, we'll put we'll put these dinos over here in the corner. This was last week's paprika. And we will vote on the name for this one this week, too. I have this whole new setup here, so look at this. I can move my arms all around. I, do, I wasn't able to do that before because I had this big tripod right in front of me. The next thing I want to figure out how to set up is making it so I can read the chat while I'm crocheting, like right here. I'd like to get that worked on. Lizzie, you rock. You rock my socks. <laughs> Next poll, which part of my body should we get a tattoo on? I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it on my calf um, I don't know right or left, but one day I will Okay, so I'm gonna start by making let me undo that so I can actually teach you here I'm making um, the horns now and I'm going to start with a slip knot So I'm just gonna yarn over on itself. I'm gonna flip that loop over on itself like so and then pull that loop from the inside like that, and I'll make a slip knot. I'm getting my crochet hook in there. And again, this pattern is exactly the same with the only main difference being um, the frill. So if you have already crocheted this before, you probably will, you, you'll be able to do it again. So for the horns, actually, I take that, exactly what I just said back, I messed up that saying because I did change the horns slightly too to make them a little bit sharper. To do that, we're going to chain three. Before it was only chain two, so chain three, one, two, and three. And I'm going to pull it really tight, which will pull these last two chains nice and tight. It'll make a really sharp horn. And then in the back loop of the first chain that we made, if I get nice and close here and it doesn't get faded out, and you look at the back here, there's a loop that goes along the back right there. You gotta get your crochet hook into that loop on the back like so and we'll do a slip stitch or a single crochet once you're into that back loop okay I think that's I think that works out I think that is that makes sense okay and then you can finish up a horn by chaining one cutting the yarn you don't need it too long just about that long and we'll just go ahead and pull through and you want to make three of these. So I'll go ahead and make the other two. And while I'm doing that, let's talk to the chat. So hello, everybody. Um, Galaxy Swirl, I saw your email. I'll get back to you right after um, after this live stream. Uh, Dang Nabbit, how you doing? Dang Nabbit is the name of someone in the chat, by the way. <laughs> What's the name of the new baby pink triceratops? That's a great question. Um, hmm. What is what is her name? Definitely a her. Not not just because it's pink, but she's got a feminine energy to it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Got any suggestions? 
We'll be naming this yellow one as well. I'll have to set up uh, something like we did in the last live stream. Where I did like a, um, a Google Sheet and everybody was able to put their names in there. But this time I only want one name per person. Last time you guys flooded it with different names. Okay, so I've got our horns made. That was pretty quick, huh? The quicker I go here, the quicker we can get a second one made too, which will be kind of fun. Okay, so we got our horns. I'll put them to the side for right now. We'll come back to them in just a bit once we get the head made. Okay. So we're going to switch to yellow yarn now or whatever color you want to use. I want to try making one of these with bulky yarn and see how big we can make one. Maybe we can do that after this. Okay, so um, so for the head, we're going to start with a magic loop method. If you don't know how to do magic loop, um, you take the yarn and you're going to wrap it around your index finger three times. You're going to hold it in your hand like so, and you're going to take your bottom three fingers and pull them over the yarn to make your finger into a little finger gun. Pew, pew. And then you wrap it around your finger three times. So one, two, and three. And then take this little end and hold it with your middle and ring finger. And it'll hold it in place like that. If, if I make it a little longer. There you go. Now you can take your crochet hook, go under the first two loops on your hand, and grab onto that third loop and pull that under the first two. And then yarn over with that same end that's attached to the yarn and pull that through the loop that you just made, which will create a chain, and that will hold this loop in place. Um, yes, I'm using 100% cotton yarn. I'm currently using Lily Sugar and Cream, I believe. Okay, so for round one of the head, we are of the body in general, we're going to single crochet four times into the magic loop. Pretty, pretty easy. There are so many fancy crochet words. So we're just gonna go into the loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. That's our second single crochet. I made one while I was talking there. So one, two, three, four. Oh, four, that's it, we only need four. Now once you got those four, we can just pull this. I like to pull my tail end, which will pull one of these two ends in. And I like to recognize which one I pulled in, which was this one. And I like to pull that one from the bottom, which will pull the second loop tighter. It's kind of confusing. But once that second loop is tighter, you can pull the tail end to get that first loop tighter. It creates a nice, nice tight, tight center, so it will just be closed hole. Okay, so that's the end of round one there. Um... Donna Price says she does her magic loops the same way. Cool, cool, cool. I missed you guys. I gotta say, I did miss you. Okay, so let's keep rocking and rolling here. I gotta move some of the screen around and get the chat back up because I screwed that up. Okay. All right, so we're on round two. For round two, we're doing a single, we're gonna work into both loops of the next stitch. And this pattern is worked in the round, meaning that we don't have to turn around for the entire piece. Oh my gosh, d, &D maps, you rock my socks. Let me finish this round and then I'll give you a little dance. But as you can see, d, &D maps just super chatted for five bucks. You rock, oh my gosh. Okay, I'll give you a dance in just a sec. Uh, all right, so for the round two, we're gonna be working in both loops for the first two stitches. So we're gonna go into this first stitch right here. Make sure you're under both loops. You'll see there's two loops over the crochet hook there. And into the first stitch, we're just gonna do a single crochet. There's one single crochet into the first stitch. Into the next stitch right here, we're gonna do an increase. So we're gonna do two single crochets into that next stitch under both loops again. One. And two. And this, this second, first and second round are a little bit more difficult. So you might have some difficult time here, but um, just be patient. It gets easier after that, I promise. I'm gonna turn the brightness down just a little bit because it's kind of hard to see the stitches. 
and we're going to be working into the back loops next and I want to make sure that's it is right see if I can get it more in focus it looks like I'm getting out of focus watch it get super out of focus now yep we knew it sorry the camera is a has a like a delay on it all right I think that fixed it a little bit okay so we worked into both loops for that last one uh, next we're going to work into the back loop only which means the loop furthest away from us so if you look at this stitch you can see there's two stitches there you want to work only into the one that's furthest away right here okay so you're only under one loop and you want to do just a single crochet into that loop okay so just one single crochet into that loop just like that and then into the final loop right here we want to do an increase and now we're working back into both loops so you worked in the back loop for the one before and then to this final one right here we're going to work into both loops and we're going to do an increase so two single crochets into that same one okay there you go and before i continue the next round uh let me do a little dance for mr D, &D maps and i saw that donna just did another super chat. Oh my gosh, you're on fire. She got those fist bump guy. I'm doing a weird walk. It's hard to dance in a chair, okay? It's hard to dance, but now I can do a little full spin, I think. Let me see if I can. That's my spin dance. Making sure no yarn got tingled in the process of doing that. Thank you guys for your support. You rock. You guys are the best. The bestest in the westest. Okay. So we finished round two. We are on round three now. Let's get a little bit of different colored yarn so that we can mark where the ends of our round is. We'll use blue. And we're on round three. For round three, it's pretty easy. We're just going to be doing an increase into each stitch around. Now we can work into both loops for every stitch too. So we can just go into both loops of each stitch. We're gonna take this end here, and I like to place it in between the yarn on the hook and the yarn attached to the yarn uh, ball right here. That way we can keep it into place and we can mark where the end of our round is. And we're gonna start with this stitch right here. We're just gonna do an increase into that stitch, which will lock it into place. Okay, and that's just gonna be the marker of where the end of our round is. So we're just doing an increase into each stitch around, which will bring you up from six stitches to 12 stitches around. So you should have 12 stitches by the end of round three here. Um, Galaxy Swirl says, thanks for the T-Rex pattern. You know what? You are welcome. I recorded that T-Rex pattern twice. Um, and so I really hope you guys like it. It took a long time to figure out that pattern. And uh, I'm very, very proud of it. If you'd like to learn more about how to crochet a T-Rex, all you have to do is go to clubcrochet.com slash T-Rex. I try to make all my patterns on the site really easily accessible like that. So they're easy to find if you need to. Okay. There we go. So there's our, all of our increases. I just did that pretty quick. I just did two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. Watching this is crazy how yarn do that. Yeah, I agree. Yarn, yarn can be manipulated in such a unique way, I think, that a lot of people don't realize. Which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so... We are on round four now. Let me pull up the pattern so that I make sure that I'm doing it everything correct. All right, so we're on round four. Round four is going to be a single crochet for the first three stitches and then an increase into the stitch after that. And then we'll repeat that over and over again. So we're going to do three single crochets. Okay, we're skipping over our, our stitch marker here so we can keep track of where our end is. How blurry is it on the screen for you guys? Because it looks like it might be pretty blurry, and I'm worried about that. 
Maybe I could focus it a little bit better. I just gotta be very careful. No? Does that make it clearer? No, I'm making it blurrier. That's gonna get way blurrier. Yep. Oh man, Gretchen says no blur. Well, ding dang it. Okay, there you go. I think I fixed it. I think I got us back to where we were. Not blurry, not blurry. Okay, okay, if you say so. Let's turn down the brightness a little bit though. Okay. So we have a uh, single crochet into our first one. We want to do three single crochets. So we got one, two, and three. So we're doing a single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you want to do an increase into the stitch after that. So three single crochets and then an increase right here. So an increase again is two single crochets into the same spot. And we'll repeat that process three times total. So three single crochets and then an increase three times in a row. So if this is our first repeat, let's do a second repeat. Three single crochets, one, two, and three. And then an increase right here. Okay, there's our second repeat. We only got one more of those repeats to do. Let's do it again. Three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then an increase right here. And that should bring you up from 12 stitches to 15 stitches. And I'll slow down a little bit, read the chat while you guys are catching up if you are crocheting along. By the way, are you crocheting along? Uh, anybody making a Triceratops along with me? Um, I'm thinking about starting a new uh, a new thing during these live streams. Uh, probably next next live stream we'll we'll start it, but doing a giveaway between live streams. So if you crochet what we make in the live stream uh, and post it to Instagram, I'll check before the next live stream and we'll choose one person randomly. We'll give them a shout out on the video and give uh, and you'll get some free patterns and stuff like that. That's, that's my idea. We'll start it probably next live stream though. Just giving you a heads up. Oh cool, you guys are. That's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yes, we are listening to Yoshi's Island, uh, I think right now, Yoshi's story. Cause you know, he's a dinosaur. And I, I'm a big fan of Yoshi. Yoshi's my main character that I use in Smash Brothers. I do appreciate you guys. I appreciate you so much. I mean, I, I've i always wanted to be a uh, professional hooker. I want to get that tattoo on me. And I feel like uh, you guys are making my dreams a reality. And I really appreciate you. Um, okay, sorry. I just got a little, a little warm on the inside with the appreciation. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we are on round, ooh, doo, doo, doo. we did round four, I believe, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we're on round five. For round five, we are doing, uh, we're increasing up one more time. So we're doing four single crochets. So into the next stitch right here. We're gonna do four single crochets. We got one, two, three, and four. Four, and I'm kind of loosening my grip as I go here. I get really tight in the beginning, but I get a little looser later on. Um, so we did four single crochets, and then we do an increase into the next one right here. So it's just like the last one, but we're adding a single crochet in between repeats. And we're gonna repeat that three times total. So four single crochets, and then an increase three times. So let's do our second repeat. One, two, three and four and then an increase right here five and a six okay one more of those repeats four single crochets one two three and four and then an increase right here five and a six 
Okay, so that's going to be the end of that round. And uh, I'll wait for you guys to catch up for a second. Let me pull that up. So that was round five, by the way. We're going to be on round six after this. And round six is actually gonna, going to be the one where we're going to be doing the frill. So I'll give it a second and then we'll keep track of the time code so we can add that for after the live stream is over. Um, Frank, uh, Fremke, I think that's Fremke de Blue, de Boo says, uh, she always has, she or he always has trouble with, uh, the eyes. Yeah, the eyes can be a little difficult. Um, I've actually found an exact placement on the last time that I made the eyes, uh, so I can kind of explain exactly where I put the eyes this time. So I, th I think you'll, um, appreciate that. It, I'll try to go a little slower, um, and show where the eyes are. Uh, but that is the more difficult part. BB says I should crochet a Yoshi. Absolutely. I actually used to have a Yoshi pattern. I took it down because it was really complicated and didn't have a video tutorial. And I'm trying to do video tutorials for everything on the site. So maybe I'll just add it onto the rough drafts on the website for right now. The, there, By the way, if you have a membership account on the site, you can actually access my rough draft patterns. And I try to put in as many rough drafts as, as I can. And the most recent rough draft, let me grab it. The most recent rough draft was for uh, this relic for Stitched. So this one I, I added to the site this week. Um, so this will be a pattern that's coming on the website soonish, but uh, I haven't been able to record a video. I haven't really um, tested out the pattern enough yet. So if you have access to it, if you have a membership account, you go to the home page, you can access my rough drafts. And on those rough drafts, if you crochet what I make and uh, provide feedback so you can say like hey you know this part is confusing to me or it's perfect uh, I had no mistakes the whole time or you could say I don't really like the the way that you sewed on this part maybe if you did it this way any any suggestions is great um, that's what the rough drafts are all for so you can access those by just going to clubcrochet.com and logging in and on the home page there there will be a little uh, a little thing in today in the announcements that'll say rough drafts that's how you can get to them you'll need a membership account to access them however um so i'll maybe i'll add the yoshi one to that so that way you can uh people can actually crochet it instead of it just not existing okay dang nav is is jamming to the music okay so we have uh we are on the uh, next round which is going to be round six and this is going to be the round where we're going to make the frill and it's going to be different so bear with me um, I've only made this a couple times so I'll try to go slow and not screw it up at all let me pull up the pattern just to make certain that I don't mess anything up so we're gonna start by single crocheting into the next six stitches so that's pretty easy you know just one two three, four, five, and six, okay? Now into the next 12 stitches, we are going to be doing, um, we're gonna be working into the back loops only, meaning the loop furthest away, f I mean the front loops only, meaning the loops closest to us. Um, let me explain where that is with this needle though. Um, so if you look at the stitch, this would be under both loops. See how we're under two two different loops there? We only want to go under this front loop. So for the next um, 12 stitches, I mean, it'll be more than 12 stitches, but working into the next 12 stitches, only work into those front loops there. And just follow my lead. We'll do a single crochet into the first front loop. So we're gonna get a crochet hook onto that first front loop and just do a single crochet. We're gonna do a half double crochet into the next front loop. So yarn over, go into the next front loop right here and do a half double crochet. So pull a yarn through, yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook. Do that half double crochet. Into the next front loop, we're going to do a double crochet increase. That means we're going to do two double crochets into the same stitch. So we're gonna yarn over Go into the front loop of the next stitch and do a double crochet. 
Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. There's one double crochet. Now we're going to do another one into that same stitch. Yarn over, go into that same stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Then yarn over and pull through two. Okay. So again, that's a single crochet into the first one, half double crochet into the next, a double crochet an increase into the next, and now we'll keep going. Next, we're just going to do one double crochet. So yarn over, go into the next front loop, do just one single double crochet, single double crochet, just a double crochet. Okay. To the next one right here, we're going to do another double crochet increase. So we're going to yarn over, go into the next front loop right here. Yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we're gonna do that again into the same stitch. So two double crochets into the next stitch. There we go. Okay, so let's let's rewind again. Single crochet, half double crochet, two double crochets, one double crochet, two double crochets. Now into the next two stitches, we're going to do one double crochet. This, this song is distracting me. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now into the next two stitches, we're going to do a double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch right here, and we're going to do one double crochet into that stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so there's the first. Now into the next stitch right here, we're going to do another double crochet. Again, we're only working on the front loop. Okay, so now we're kind of working backwards. So we, we basically worked a pattern up and we're going to work that same pattern back down. So that pattern being a single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet increase, one double crochet, double crochet increase, and then a double crochet. And we're going to work that backwards. So now we're doing, we've done our first double crochet. Now we're going to do a double crochet increase into the next stitch. So yarn over, go into the next stitch right here, double crochet increase. So that means two double crochets into that same stitch. Okay, now just one double crochet into the next stitch. Now a double crochet increase into the next stitch. So that means two double crochets into that same stitch. Again, we're still only working those front loops. Okay, there's the double crochet increase. And then a half double crochet into the next one right here. And we're gonna finish up by doing a single crochet into the front loop of the last stitch right here. And I'll repeat that all one more time in a very succinct way, and I won't screw it up at all. <laughs> and then I'll check the chat while you guys are going through and uh, answer any questions that you guys have. So again, it's working into, we did six single crochets, and then working into the front loops only, we did one single crochet, one half double crochet, two double crochets, a double crochet increase into the next one. So single, half double, double crochet increase, double crochet, double crochet increase, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet increase, double crochet, double crochet increase, half double crochet, single crochet. I know there's a lot there. I have this pattern written down. I'll just put it in the chat really quick. Or I'll put it in the, I'll try to put it in the chat um, and I'll try to put it in the description as well. Here, is, here it is in the chat. And let me fix it for the... And feel free to ask me any questions while I'm doing this. Um... Okay. The song is makes me want to go to sleep. 
Okay, so I changed the description. It should be in the description now. It says alternate, uh, alternate round for the the frill. So if you look in the in the description, it should be there. Yeah, and the, the yeah. So the written instructions might be more confusing than me actually explaining it. I don't know. It, it depends on how you're uh, the kind of learner, you know? Okay, D does anybody need any further explanation on um, how to do that frill? Before I continue? Let me drink some coffee while I'm waiting. Let me know if you have any questions before I continue. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, oh, you know what? That's a mess up. Diane. Ah, okay. So that's actually a goof. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. That means I goofed it on the website as well. Don't, oh boy, I totally screwed that up. Okay, so it, it actually is an 18 plus five MP. Um, that's for the old pattern. So I screwed up by not fixing that in the written pattern. So really the stitches that you should have by the end of this round are one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's for working into both loops. And then for the frill, it's, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So it should say 22. So let me paste that into the comments again. And I fixed it in the description. I'll fix it on the website after this as well. So here you go. There you go. There's the fixed one. Katrina, so do you do it on the second time on top of the first frill? No. So this is in replace for the old frill. So this is like an adjusted uh, new version of the frill. Okay. Okay, so let me continue on. Um, I'll show you how to do uh, the the outer, um, the white white trim on the outside. You're going to need a small amount of white yarn, about mm, this much. It's maybe two feet, three feet of white yarn. Not very much. So grab that, cut that, and place that to the side. And now we are on, um, we're technically on round seven. But I'm only going to do round seven, uh, a few stitches of round seven, before I start messing with this white yarn. So, well, actually, we can do all of them. Okay, so let's let's just do round seven, and then I'll add the white trim. I think that might actually be easier. So first, I'm going to pull up the stitch marker here. Um, Donna, I will be changing the PDF. I'll be doing that after this. I just didn't have time last night. I was up to like 4 a.m. fixing everything. Um, okay, so for round seven, we're going to single crochet into each of the stitches, uh, uh, into the next six stitches working into both loops. Okay, so we're gonna do six single crochets working into both loops. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now working into the back loops only. Okay, so if we flip that frill up like this, let me cut this tail end here so it doesn't get in our way. And we'll cut the stitch marker a little closer too. Get that out of the way. Okay, so if you flip up the frill like this, you'll see all the back loops of the um, of the previous round that we didn't work into. 
Okay, so here is the last one that we made. And if we count back, there should only be 12 of these. So 12 of these back loops. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So it'll be this one is our first back loop. And into each one of these back loops, we want to work a single crochet. Okay. So we're just going to move this crochet hook out of the way. And we're just going to single crochet into the next 12 back loops. One, two, we're ignoring the frill completely. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and here is 12. Okay, so once you have those 12 single crochets made, you can flip that frill back up like that. And let me show you how to add the white trim on the outside. Let me read the, let me read the chat here. Oh, we got someone that missed a round. Yes, I have to fix the, um, the horn on the website as well. Um, and yes, I'll, I will be fixing the PDF later. Here is the change of the horn, Victoria. It's instead of chain two, it's chain three. Pull tight. Skip the Oh, oh, I should say working into the first chain from the hook or working into the back loop only of the first chain. From... Single, single crochet one. There you go. I put it in the chat for you. Okay. I feel... <laughs> Dang Nabbit, you're funny. <laughs> Leandra, thank you very much. Okay, so now let's add these frills. So we're going to take this white yarn that you cut and we're going to thread that onto uh, the end of a needle. And you want to start at the the one side of the frill, we're going to start by hiding it into the back of a few stitches. So we just want to hide it into like the back of somewhere here. It doesn't really matter. The point being, it's just going to lock it into place and just hide it. Okay, so see how I just put it into the back of, of a few single crochets? I'm just going to keep it where it needs to be. You can leave a bit of an end there. That'll just get stuffed on the inside. And we're going to come out from where the frill starts, from where that single crochet is. And we're gonna come out from the top. So we're coming out from the through the inside of the body to the first single crochet that you made in the frill. Like so. Okay, so now going a, uh, around each of the stitches along the frill, we're going to be going around each one of these stitches with this white yarn, and we're going to stop halfway through, and we're gonna go work into the body. So let me just show you what that means. So we're gonna go around this stitch, and we're gonna go into the next stitch right here, come out through the back, into the front. See how this is gonna create like a little, a little fringe there? And the fringe is going to be poking, pointing uh, towards the inside of the head. We're going to do that for half of these stitches going all the way up to the middle of the, the frill. So one, two, three. See, we're just going, working our way up to the center of the frill. And we're going to do this exact same thing on the opposite side so that all of these point inward. You could just keep going all the way till you're at the other side of the frill, but if you did that, these would be 
pointing, all be pointing in like that. They'd all just go across, which I mean, it's easy. And if you don't mind that, that's fine too. But uh, I'm going to show you how to do it so it goes the other way as well. So that it looks more here. If you, if you look at on, on this one, I'll show you. See how like they point in and then they point in on both from both sides. It's like they're both going in. Whereas if you kept going across all the way across the frill, it would all be pointing this way. So I want to avoid that, although it's easier to do it that way. I want to try to avoid that. Okay, so I'm about to the center right here. This is going to be the center of the frill. So let's see how many I do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like eight. Once I do eight of these of these um, frill edgings, I can go down the back of the frill. So I'm just gonna hide my end into this double crochet that's on the back of this frill and just go straight into the body. See what I mean? And it'll show it a little bit on the back, but it's not too bad. And we can actually just cut this end. You wanna leave a little bit of an end because we're going to double knot this on the inside, but leave like that much of an end. And we're going to do that on the opposite side as well. So we're going to do this exact same thing on the opposite side. So what we're going to do, let's pull this stitch marker out. We'll come back to it and we'll add it back in later. But on the opposite side, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go into the back of a few stitches just to hide the end. One, two, three. That's probably good. We're gonna come up through the first of the frill on the opposite end right here. Okay. And we're gonna go around all of these frills all the way back till we get to the middle and we're gonna hide it on the inside again. So we're just gonna keep going up and it should, I think be eight again. So there's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Actually seven looks good. I think seven looks better than doing another one. So we're up to the center now and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go into the back of the, the frills. We're just going to hide it into these double crochets, just kind of like going through those double crochets and then out into the body. And then once you're in the body like this, we're going to take these two ends of this white yarn and we could just double knot them on the inside. One, and two. And now we can cut these ends nice and close. There you go. Now we got our frills on and they, they're all pointing towards the inside of the head. Again, you don't need to do it that way. You could do it a different way completely if you want wanted to. Oh shoot, my brother's calling me. Bad time to call me, Taylor. <laughs> okay, so let me know uh, if you have any questions about this. Maddie asks, "Is if is this beginner friendly?" I would say, no, not 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 absolute beginner. I would say it's beginner friendly for Amy Gurumi, but if you have never crocheted before, like Melbell says in the chat there. You should always, uh, you should probably check out Crocheting 101. That's my introduction series, um, and it's completely free. You can find it at crocheting101.com. You might want to go through that before you try doing this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Leandro, you're very welcome. <laughs> Yes, and we have, and there are crocheting 101 kits available for sale. Uh, if you've never crocheted before and you want, and you're interested in learning, 
uh, get a crocheting 101 kit. You can find those at just crocheting101.com as well. Okay, so we got our frill on there now. Um, the rest of this pattern is exactly the same as the old Triceratops pattern. So, I mean, of course, I'm still going to teach it. But um, just letting you know, if you've crocheted the tri Triceratops before and you remember the pattern, it's the same pattern. So first, I'm going to work around this end here. And we're going to do the next round where we're going to add um, the legs. So we're going to start by doing a single crochet into both loops of our next stitch right here. So we're not working into back loops or front loops anymore. And when we go around, we're going to work into the stitches um, from round, uh, I believe, eight there or seven or eight, where we did the single crochets into the back loop. We're going to be working into these, not into the frills. So the frills are made so that it sticks straight up. Okay. So we do one single crochet into our first stitch for this round. I believe we are on, let me see. We are on round eight, yeah. So we do one single crochet and then we're going to do a bobble stitch. For a bobble stitch, we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch right here, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to repeat that four times in a row. So there's our first repeat. Let's do that four times. So there's one, two, yarn over into the same stitch. We're working all these four repeats in the same stitch. Pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. There's, there's three. One more repeat. Yarn over into the same stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two. There's four. That's going to be how you make a bobble. Now there should be five loops on the crochet hook. To finish it up, we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those uh, loops to finish up the bobble stitch. You can see it's finished up right there. I'm going to take a second right there before I continue to have people uh, kind of catch up. Uh, we're going to be doing two more single crochets and then another bobble um, to, for the rest of these legs. But um, before I do that, I'm going to take a second uh, I wish I did took a second before I started this round, but yeah. Um, CDM's Crochet Knit and Sewing 2 <laughs> asks, is there a Stegosaurus crochet free tutorial? No, the crochet tutorial for the Stegosaurus is a membership exclusive or you have to purchase it. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash stego. Um, and yeah, it, it's, a, it's an exclusive pattern, so you'll need to either purchase it or have a membership account. Um, Vince, Vicente, uh, oh, by the way, first off, Vicente, who is in the chat right now, was the one that told me that this is called the frill. Uh, and I told him I'd give him a shout out. So thank you so much for uh, letting me know the right term for what this is called. Um, and he asks, will I be doing a raptor? I will be doing a raptor. I have, um, it's in the other room. I have a prototype made for the raptor. Uh, I need to work on it a little bit, a little bit more, because uh, the pattern's a little confusing. But I will be working on other crochet patterns in the in the um, in the future. Victoria says that she has a basic account. Will that do? Um, a basic account will get you access to the written pattern for for this pattern that we're currently working on. But you'll need a membership level account to get access to the Stegosaurus. Um, to the upgraded version of the T-Rex that includes the belly and the spikes and to the Brontosaurus pattern. Okay. An Ankylosaurus, yes, I would love to be doing an Ankylosaurus. I, I think an Ankylosaurus and a, um, a, a water dinosaur that's kind of like a Loch Ness monster I think will be um, patterns that I come out with in the future. Uh, I think I'm going to take a somewhat of a break from... Um, from dinosaurs for a second, but I'll come back to it. Uh, can I do more live streams? We do these every single Sunday, actually, Leandra. So every Sunday you can come and watch, uh, do these crochet along live streams with me. Uh, I also want to do, start doing a movie night. So we're actually voting for that right now. I probably should have mentioned that. If you want to vote for if we want to do a movie night or a book club. Um, so the idea is going to either be a ongoing book club where we listen to an audiobook 
through a live stream and we uh, crochet something along uh, while we're making or while we're listening to the book club or we will be doing a movie night so we'll be crocheting along while we uh, watch a movie so you can vote on which of those two that you want if you just go to clubcrochet.com and log in if you go to the home page uh, and you scroll down there's a little voting thing where you can vote on books versus movies so those are coming soonish okay so let's keep going here so we did our one bobble stitch we did our single crochet and then a bobble stitch now we need to continue that along we need to do two more single crochets working into both loops now one single crochet there one single crochet here so there's one two and then another bobble stitch right here so yarn over go into both loops pull a loop through yarn over and pull through two kind of like you're starting a double crochet but we're going to repeat that five times I mean four times so there's one let's do it again yarn over go into the same stitch yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through two okay there's our second repeat let's do third repeat yarn over into the same stitch yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two third repeat one more yarn over into the same stitch yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two and then to finish up the bobble stitch you should have five loops on the hook we're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook like that that'll be the end of that bobble stitch and that's how we're going to make their little feet you can see the little feet there uh, if you want to learn more about the bobble stitch i have a whole video where i teach it in a lot more detail you just need to go to clubcrochet.com slash bobble pretty easy Um, and yes, I would be doing the uh, the movie nights and book clubs on a different night. Yeah, so it'll be movie night and these will, these live streams will still be going. The movie night will just be in addition to these live streams. Okay, so now to, f uh, to finish up this round, we're just going to be doing a single crochet into the remaining stitches. I believe there are 13 more stitches, so just do a single crochet all the way until you get to the end of this round and we're just working into both loops when we get to the end of this round we'll start working on the face um, which has uh, some explanation that is needed so I'll, I'll, I'll be going into a little bit more detail when it gets to that face so let's get to the end of this round first and let me know what you think about doing these live stream patterns um, I'm wondering if it's worth uh, continuing to do these live stream patterns or if it's better to just do full video tutorial patterns and then just do live streams as uh, crocheting one of the uh, previous patterns instead I don't know okay so I finished up those uh, all the way to the end of that round uh, of just single crochets you should still have 18 stitches around if you want to count back so I'll put this to the side for a second um, I'll let the chat ask any questions that they want and uh, in the meantime while I'm doing that I'm going to create a Google sheet for us so that we can vote on the name so let me just get that made while we're while people are catching up and stuff <laughs> all right ah. So I think this is going to be the easiest way. This is what we did last week is I just created a f Google sheet and I put the link in the chat and then anybody that wanted to could um, just put in their put in their names. But this time when you put in your name, only put it in once. I don't want to see you guys. It's not fair if you put in like D&D maps last week, put in like so many options and then got three of his options on the vote. And I don't think that's very fair, man. So this time. This time only put one. One suggestion per user, please. Okay. Um, name suggestions for yellow triceratops. And then at the end of the live stream, I will go through the suggestions. 
I'm just gonna put lemon right in there because I think that's a great suggestion. Lemon and, oh, oh no, I broke my, ah, I broke everything. No, it's all good. We're good. It just scared me. <laughs> lemon and the second name I wrote in was because I screwed up the chat. Okay. That was really funny. Everything's plugged in still, right? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I have a link. Let me just put that in the chat. There you go. Okay, so enter all the names that you want into the to the thing I just put into the chat. Not into the chat itself. Right? Put it on the Google Sheet that I just put a link to in the chat. Don't worry. Everything's fine. The computer is not broken. Oh, I love the mango. That's a great name, too. <laughs> yeah, technical difficulties. And I'll just keep an eye on uh, all the names that are coming in. Yeah, just start writing them below lemon. Oh, I need to change the options here so that you can edit them. I'm sorry. One second. Change. And editor there you go now you should now you should be able to edit it i'll put the link again in the chat just in case though yeah fix the edit there we go i, I can see people coming in now but <laughs> someone just wrote but Marzipan, that's great. Leonard, I love it. Okay, great. So we got names coming in now. All right, so while we are getting those names in, let's keep on keeping on on this pattern here. We are on um, we are on rounds 9 through 11. So, oh no, that's right. We want to do the face. So let's crochet the face next. Let me get the chat back up. Okay, so next we're going to be making the face. Um, there are very specific places that I like to add the horns and um, the eyes and stuff. So let's start with the horns because they are the easiest ones for me. The first one uh, is right in the center of the face. We want to do the horns. Now, if you look at the, the horns, you'll see that they kind of curve in, uh, in one direction. Okay, so that direction should be the bottom of it. So with the curve should be at the bottom of the horn so that it goes like this. See how the curve goes up? Just a little bit. So let's thread the bottom of that curve. So there's two ends, two tail ends here. So let's thread this bottom tail first. And I'm just going to take my crochet hook and we're going to go right through the center. See how there's a little hole right in the center right there? That's where we want our first end. So we just want to get their crochet hook into there. Just pull it through so that it holds into place. And we could thread the other end, tail end of this horn. And for the other tail end, we want to go in through, um, you can see this little bar right here. That's the front loop. So remember how in the round two, we worked into the back loop of one of the stitches? We did that so that we could go into just, it makes it easier to tell where you're going to sew on that horn. So you're going to go above that little bar right here pull that one through. That's going to be where the middle of the horn goes. Now, once you have both those tail ends in there like that, we want to pull it tight enough so that these little knots get pulled into, um, into the body of our piece. So if you look on the inside here, I'll just kind of like flip it inside out. See where our tail ends are coming through here? You need to pull it enough so that that knot gets pulled through with it. Don't try to be careful not to pull it too tight or you will break the yarn. But see how those two knots are just poking on through? That's exactly what we want. And once those two knots are in there, we can double knot it on the inside. One. 
and two. And then we can cut the ends of this pretty close. Throw that to the side. Okay. There you go, we got our first horn on right in the center. Okay, now the second two horns, we're going to start by threading the top of the horns. Remember how the, the first time we threaded from the bottom of the curve? This time we're gonna thread the tail at the top of the curve, so right here. Okay. We're gonna yarn, uh, thread that onto a needle. And the top one goes right under the frill. Um, if you look at the top of our piece, you'll see this little increase stitch right here. You wanna go one stitch over from that increase, so right there. So if you look at the frill, let's count uh, these little ends here. So we go one, two, three, four, five stitches up from the frill at the very base of that frill, right there is where you want the top of it to go. Does that, does that make sense? I think, I think that helps. So pull that one through the top and then we want to just go in a stitch directly down from that. So right here, thread the other end of that horn and just pull that through. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit more outward. So we're trying to make like a perfect triangle for the horns. And then once those two tails, again, look at the where they're at in placement. I'll do this so that you can maybe get a better idea of where the stitches are. Once you've got those both in, you want to pull them enough so that the knots get pulled in on the inside. And then do that double knot again. One. And two. And then we could just cut this nice and close. Okay, so there's two of the horns are on. You can see this new horn pattern where we do three chains instead of two makes it a little bit spikier, a little bit pointier of a horn. Okay, so let's get this last one. We're gonna do the last one the same way. We're gonna thread the top of the horn first. And the other horn is going to go in one stitch away from that increase as well. So if we count up from the other side, it's gonna go right here on the base. So if you look, here's that increase again, right there. We do a stitch away from that increase. So if we count from the frills, we got the single crochet half double, then the double crochet increase, then just the regular double crochet, and it's gonna be at the base of the second double crochet increase from the left side of the frill. Oof, that is confusing. Um, but I hope, I hope you can kind of tell where that is right there. If you look at where the first horn is, let's do that. Let's look at the top of the first horn. We count to left. We go from the left of the first horn. So we go one, two, three, four stitches from the left of that first horn. And then down a stitch from that for the other end of the horn. There we go. We're just gonna pull that in just enough so that the knots get pulled in and we can double knot it on the inside. There's a lot going on in the chat, so I'll get to that in just a second. Um, let me add, well, let me just wait a second while you guys do the horns there, and then I'll get to the eyes in just a second. Um, in the middle, while I'm while I'm waiting for you guys to catch up, I'll I'll go through the the chat. Do do do. D and D maps asks if I ever played D and D. Yes, I love D and D, but I don't have um a group. I don't have a group to play D and D with, so I haven't played it in a little bit, unfortunately. Ishidashi asks, what yarn do we use? We're using Lily Sugar and Cream yarn, 100% cotton, a worsted weight yarn. That's my favorite to use. Macroon. I love the name Macroon. That's great.
Okay. Let's see the names. Let's see the name suggestions. How many we've got here? Okay. Good. Great. Oh my gosh, we got like twenty. That's awesome. Okay. Great suggestions. Great suggestions. All right. Let's minimize that. Get the chat back up. Okay. So next up, we are adding our our, our eyeballs. Um, and our eyeballs are going to go directly under the horns. So if you look at um, where our our right and our left horn is, our eyes, we want them to go pretty much right under the horns. So like right there. Okay, so if you, if you go straight down another stitch from the horn, it's going to go right there. Does that, that make sense? And then we're just going to go place it in there. Okay, and we're not going to lock it into place until we make sure that we have both of our horns exactly where we want to. If you look at the other side, we want it right, yeah, right here, right here. Okay, so just directly under, like vertically down from where the other horn, the horns are sewn on. Like so. There you go. Not bad, not bad, right? Okay, so now we can just take these little, these ends here. We can go on the inside and just lock those eyeballs into place. And those are the most difficult parts of this pattern. After this, um, we will have a couple more bobble stitches to make for the other side of the feet. Um, but the majority of the pattern is pretty easy from here on. I really hope you guys like this. Um, thank you guys so much for joining the live stream again. Uh, and yeah, thank you. And quick shout out to Leandro's, uh, Leandro's dog, Char Charlie. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Okay, so we got it. Yeah. Do, do I play Magic the Gathering? No, I don't. But I know Magic the Gathering, obviously. Um, I was just really into... When I was a kid, I was really into Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Really into Pokemon. I had so many Pokemon cards. I had a first edition uh, holographic Charizard. And my mom threw it away. Didn't even know what it was. Such a bummer. Hmm... Locking them in. Your head always deforms when locking. Yeah, yeah, that usually happens when you when you lock those eyes in. It usually like gets pushed in like that, and it lo like it looks a little bit like um. You're just you got a special triceratops, so you have to pop them, pop it back out. It when you stuff it back up, it it like uh. It should fill in a little bit better though. Okay, so for the next two, uh, three rounds rather, for rounds 9, 10, 11, that's three rounds in a row, we're just going to be, um, we'll just be crocheting a single crochet into each stitch around. So three rounds of just single crochet. So this is a nice, easy break from uh, the chaos of the beginning of this pattern. But it's just three rounds of just single crochets all the way around. And that's that's nice and easy. So while that's happening, I can easily check the chat. What happened? Oh, s people are saying no, no, no. I'm sorry. I don't know. I I don't remember what I said. <laughs> Um, can I put in, can you put the eyes in differently? Have I been putting in safety as I, I never noticed that you do it differently. Oh, um, so the way that I do it, I actually have a video where I teach how to do safety eyes a little bit, uh, in a little bit more detail. If you just go to clubcrochet.com slash safety eyes, um, there's a whole video tutorial. You can also just check it out on my YouTube channel. But one of the things I talk about in that video is uh, how I like to put on my safety eyes uh, backwards to where people normally do it. And let me show you. Let me grab the can, let me grab a safety eye and I'll just show you real quick. So 
So if you look, a lot of people, uh, the suggestion on how to add safety eyes is that when you place them into a body, you're supposed to place it, see how this, uh, this locking mechanism has a curve to it? So it's like kind of sticking out. A lot of people suggest that you put it in this way so that the curve is pointing into your piece and it locks it in a little bit tighter. Now, something that I've noticed is that these eyes are practically impossible to remove once you have them on the face. Uh, they're very, very difficult to remove, regardless if you point it in this way or the other way. And the, another thing that I noticed, this is so this is the way I normally place it so that the curve is uh, towards the inside of the piece like that. And another thing I noticed that is if you do the curve outward like this, it makes your character's face kind of pull inward. You kind of get this like, like dent into the face when you do it this way. So I like to point it outward because I find very few um, repercussions to it. There's, there's very few things that, uh, that go awry when you do it this way. And you don't have to deal with the face getting pulled inward. So I suggest pointing, pointing it in just like that. Yeah. A lot of people point, put it in the other way. I don't think it really matters, but yeah. Oh, you're, you're saying no because of the holographic card. Eh, it's okay. It happens. It happens. World moves on. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love that idea. Willy Girl says, is there a way to make a, the Triceratops a shirt? So are you trying to say, wait, okay. We have two different, I have two different ways I could take that. First way is turning it into a t-shirt that a human being could wear, a t-shirt with a Triceratops on it, which is an adorable idea that I love. Uh, the other idea is to give the Triceratops a t-shirt, which is also cute. And I like that idea too. <laughs> Okay, so I'm on my second round of single crochets here. Um, let me get to the end of the round here. And then I would like to show off something that I have that I worked on over the week um, that I'm really proud of. And uh, it'll be a little a little uh, a little sneak peek into what um, a, a future tutorial. It's gonna be a while till I do this tutorial just because I have so many things uh, that I want to work on in a, uh, before I come out with this, but there is a tutorial coming up soon-ish. Let me just get to the end of this round and I'll, and I'll show you what I mean. I, I know the anticipation is, oh my gosh, the, the Triceratops in a tuxedo. I love that idea. Make the choice. <laughs> um, will I be making an elephant? Yes, I will be making an elephant. Um, I have the plan. I've already started working on a prototype. I worked on it this week a little bit. Um, but yes, an elephant will be coming to this to the site eventually. Um, there's just so many tutorials I want to do in advance uh, before then. Okay, so I finished our three rounds of single crochets. Now, before I continue on, uh, while you guys are catching up, if you are. Um, let me show you this cool little sneak peek. I got to reach over. Okay, so there's a YouTuber that I'm a really big fan of. Um, he goes by uh, uh, Steady Crafting. Uh, he calls himself um, uh, the Crafts Man with no T, so Crafts Man. Anyhow, he does like uh, resin crafts and stuff like that. He doesn't do crocheting. But he has a call out for. Um, like submissions for making a little puppet version of him that says his intro line to his uh, his video. So he goes like, hello, my name, uh, uh, my name is your host, the Craftsman. So I made a puppet version of him. Check this guy out. So there's a whole mechanism on the inside. I've done a few of these in the past, but there's a mechanism and it's actually pretty easy to make, um, but I have to do a tutorial for it. But when you pull the end on the back here, it opens, opens the mouth. Hello, my name is your host. Pretty cool, right? And it's just, I put a straw on the inside, which is attached to a, so you can just actually take it off. 
there's a there's a um a uh what's it called a paperclip there's a paperclip on the inside that holds this into place and then there's this mechanism i built with cardboard and straws and tape and stuff which uh which is like a puppet little mechanism so when you pull the back it opens the mouth ba -ba 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 -ba. So that tutorial is coming up soonish, um, and I'm going to do the video for this craftsman thing soon as well. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of craftsman. He he's he's awesome. I, I really like him. Veronica uh, asks, her son is watching Jurassic World two. He wants to know if you can make a Spinosaurus. Yes, I can. That is the plan. Uh, it, the pattern is probably going to look more like a raptor. But the idea originally was to make it a, more of a Spinosaurus. So, yes, there will be a Spinosaurus pattern eventually. A saddle. Yes, we could. You know what? Maybe we'll make a saddle in this video. Okay, so we are on round. Although we already have been crocheting for a while, so maybe not. Um, we are on round um, uh, 12. So we're on round 12. We're going to be making the back legs now. So for the back legs, we are going to start by doing two single crochets, one and two, and then we'll do a bobble stitch in the next. So if you remember the bobble stitch, it's just like four double crochets put together. I'm going to not probably uh, teach how to do the bobble stitch again since we've done it twice in this video, but we'll be doing a bobble stitch. So it's two single crochets and then a bobble, and then three more single crochets after you do the bobble stitch. So there's one, two, three, and then another bobble stitch right here. So that's two single crochets, a bobble, three single crochets, a second bobble. Here's our second bobble stitch. And then finish up by doing a single crochet into the remaining, uh, I believe, 12 stitches. Let's count. One, two, three. And this is creating the back of the legs. That was four and five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, 11. Okay, so there's only 11. My, my mistake. Okay, so that's going to be the end of that round there. We got our back legs on, our front legs on. Now we're just going to be starting to work on our tail, and we can almost finish this fella up here. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Oh my gosh, you're right. We would have a Neapolitan-themed trio if we did a brown one, too. Um, I'm just going to pull this tail of this this um, stitch marker out because it's I left it all the way back here anyhow let's just get it out of there and if you haven't liked the video yet um, there's a bunch of likes on this video so thank you guys so much but if you uh, if anybody hasn't please like it down below subscribe to the YouTube channel all that fun stuff if you hit that little bell icon you'll get notified whenever I come out with new videos or do live streams stuff like that Okay, so we are on, uh, the next round is just single crochets. So we're just gonna be doing single crochets into each stitch around. There should still be 18 stitches around. So that's 18 single crochets around. Pretty easy squeezy lemon peasy. Haha, -ha, lemon. Speaking of lemon. Speaking of lemon, don't forget to suggest your names. We're coming to the end now. So where I'll pick a name out, uh, I'll pick four names out of the suggested names. And I will pull, uh, put a put a uh, poll out on YouTube, and I'll send you guys the link to the poll, and uh, you guys can vote on the name. But let me get to the end of this round first, and I'll repost the poll. So that's the end of that round. It's just all single crochets. 
After the second bobble stitch, you just do single crochets to get to the end of the round. That's a, a 11 more single crochets. Okay, so again, uh, I posted in the chat one more time uh, the the name suggestion uh, sheet. So put your names in that sheet if you haven't already. Uh, one name per per user, please. There have been 20 names. And we only need four. So, you know, your chance of getting a good name in there is pretty good. And we got some good ones. We got mustard, popcorn. <laughs> I like how they're all food themed. Custard. <laughs> Custard's cute. I like Phyllis. Makes me think of uh, of The Office, which I'm a big fan of. Which, who, is, who isn't a big fan of The Office? Yeah, the puppet is pretty cool, huh? I'll be doing more puppets definitely in the future. Okay, so we are on... Um, what round are we on? We are on round 14. For round 14, we're decreasing down from 18 stitches down to 12 stitches around. So to do that, we're going to single crochet into our first stitch right here. So there's one single crochet. And then we're going to do an invisible decrease into the next. For an invisible decrease, we're taking our crochet hook and we're going to work into the front loops of the next two stitches. So this is the front loop. If you look at the top here, these are both loops. We only want to work into this front loop. So the front loops of this front loop and this front loop. Two of these front loops. Boom, boom. You want to get into both of them. So we go front loop and then front loop with our crochet hook. And then we work a single crochet into that front loop for an invisible decrease. So we yarn over and pull through, then yarn over, pull through two. So that's an invisible decrease. So again, we're going to do one single crochet and then one invisible decrease six times in a row. And that will bring us down from 18 stitches to 12 stitches. So let's do a second repeat. A single crochet and then an invisible decrease. There's two. Let's do another one. Single crochet, invisible decrease. And we're halfway through. Single crochet, invisible decrease. Single crochet, invisible decrease. And then now we just have one more of a single crochet and then a final invisible decrease right here. Okay. And that will be the end of round 14. We're on round 15 now, but before I get to round 15, I'd like to take a second, read the chat, and stuff our character up a little bit. It's like watching a beehive being made. It is kind of like watching a beehive being made. So I'm just going to take some stuffing and stuff them up a little bit before we get to the point where it's kind of difficult to stuff them. Just a little bit. We don't need too much just yet. We will add more stuffing though. Okay. Let's keep rocking and rolling here. Okay, so we are on our final, um, well, our second to last round. We're on round 15. For round 15, we are going to invisible decrease one. So for our first stitch, we're invisible decreasing. And then we single crochet two working into both loops, so not just the front loop, like an invisible decrease, but both loops. So there's one and two. And then for the rest of this round, we want to do four more double or invisible decreases. So four invisible decreases. Again, that's one invisible decrease, two single crochets, and then four invisible decreases. So there's one, two, Three and whoopsies, messed that one up. Let's try that again. Four. Okay, and we're just gonna pull that out, leave that there for just a second. Um, Dean D. Maps asked, "What is uh, 
what do I normally play in D and D? I normally, my favorite thing to play is a uh, is a rogue. I really like playing rogues. Um, I usually like playing a gnome rogue, but the next time I play, I really want to play with uh, a goblin rogue, uh, Shank. Uh, if you don't know, I have a I have a little goblin that I've crocheted. He, he that's name is Shank, and he's a little. Um, I have actually a poem that I wrote from. It goes. Um, this is Shank, the goblin assassin. He'll pocket your pick without even asking. He'll then try to pawn it to his old friend. Hold on. Let me let me read it. Let me let me find it on here. I like the poem a lot though. Short stories, isn't it that? No. I have like so many different Let's look up Shank. Ah, here it is. Okay, so it goes, This is Shank, the goblin assassin. He'll pocket your pick without even asking. He'll then try to sell it to his old pal, th to his old pal Thrash, who won't accept picks, because Shank owes him cash. He'll break into a castle to find what to take, then leave that pick there to frame you and make for a break. So that's my little poem that I wrote about Shank, the goblin assassin. Okay, so we are <laughs> so we are on uh, our final round here. Let me finish stuffing this just a little bit more. This is our last chance to stuff our character. So for our final round, round sixteen, we're going to grab our crochet hook, put it in there, and close it up, and we're going to invisible decrease one. So front loop, front loop. And then single crochet into that for an invisible decrease. So there's just one invisible decrease and then one single crochet in both loops. And then another invisible decrease. And then finish up by doing one more single crochet. and a slip stitch into the very last stitch right here we want to do a slip stitch and we can cut the yarn and just pull it all the way through like that pretty easy squeezy there and we'll just take the needle on the end here thread that on the end and we're going to sew this closed um, I have a video where I teach how to sew closed in a little bit more detail. So you might want to go check out that by going to clubcrochet.com slash um, sewing closed, I think, or sew closed. Okay, so to sew it closed, I'm just going to count up one, two stitches and then come out. And I'm basically just going to be going around till it's closed, I think only a few times. So up to the next one right here. And I like to go down and out through the a stitch that's... Um, parallel to it and finish up by going down this one coming out through the body and you can see that leaves a little tiny point at the end and we can cut the end nice and close and that'll be that there we go and that's how we're gonna crochet a little tiny triceratops Thank you guys. By the way, I'm not uh, I'm not just done yet because I need to choose a name and stuff. But if you did crochet this along with me, uh, I just really want to say thank you so much. And uh, if you'd like to show off your little crocheted triceratops, I would absolutely love to see it. So you can either post it onto the onto Instagram with hashtag Club Crochet, and you can tag Club Crochet. It's just Club dot Crochet. Um, you can find that in the description below. It's at club.crochet. If you want to tag me directly, um, I am at Louis Loops. Uh, and if you'd like to tag, um, uh, if you'd like to post it on Facebook, there's a Facebook group. Melbell actually just posted it into the chat, but you can also find it in the description below. We have a Facebook group where you can post a picture of your character there as well. Um, but seriously, I'd love to see it. Uh, I look at every one of them that's on there. Or at least I tried to. Um, 
Zoe asks, uh, how long does the live stream stay up for? So the live stream will be, this one will probably be live forever. Like you can always watch it. Uh, but past live streams, I think I'm going to take them off after a few weeks so that they don't fill up the um, my uploads. So if you go on YouTube, you know, it's not just live streams. Um, I'm going to talk about that in the monthly hookup, which is coming uh, up this week. Um, okay, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's choose a name now. Name suggestions. So we got lemon, marzipan, marigold, buttercup. Oh, yo, yo, oh butter. I like buttercup and butter. That's cute. Apple, apple cart. Oh, there's so many good names. Okay, it's going to be hard to choose. Okay, so first off, let's get our, let's get that open. Go to YouTube. And then I'll just post it in the chat and I'll add it to the description of this video. Okay, so we got a poll. What should we name today's Triceratops. Okay, and let's add, I like to add the link to this live stream so that people that haven't watched the live stream can actually see it before they make a vote. And here's the options we got. I really like butter. I think that's a fun name for a for a triceratops. I like custard. Let's do custard. I like oh Okay. All right. Okay, so here's the options we got. We got butter, custard, sherbet, and sunny with an O. Those are those are the ones that were my favorite. But they were all really good. That that one was really hard to decide on for because um they were especially perfect for this guy's character. So here is I'll put it in the chat. There you go. So you can vote on it right there. And I'll put it in the description of this video as well for future people that are watching. Vote on the name here. Okay, so it's going to be in the very top of the video. Okay. All right. So there we go. So vote on in the name right there. And I do have to say thank you guys again so, so much. Thank you so much for joining in this live stream. Um, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you like this new pattern, this new version of the pattern. I think it's really succinct and very, like, um, put together. Uh, and I'm really proud of it. I like how the frill stands up a little bit uh, more than the previous pattern, which is right here. Um, not that this one's bad at all. I love this pattern, too. I just think it's kind of cool to have options, you know? Um, yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll be... Oh, my gosh, Nat! Okay, so we got another super chat right at the end, and I want to say... Thank you so much. Nathalie, um, I hope I'm saying that right, Nathalie. Uh, thank you so much. She says, thank you from a mom of a little girl who loves to learn from you. Oh, my gosh. That is so sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, here's a little Here's a little dance. I do a little walk dance too much. Maybe I'll do robot. Oh, here, wait. Let me show you one more thing that I was working on this week. I might have showed you this last week, actually. But check out this old man ogre that I made. 
This, this might have been from last week, actually. I think I've shown you this before. But still, it's really cool, right? Okay, anyhow. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to show you that right at the end there. If you Again, if you like these dinosaur patterns and you want more, go to clubcrochet.com slash dino. That's where you can find more of these dinosaur patterns. And if you want to support even more so, um, you can get uh, some stickers and stuff. And it could be a hooker. We got a stitch sticker. Um, and then there's a blue, blue one right here. Um, I'm adding t-shirts uh, very soon to the merch shop on the website. Oh, he fell forward. Poor old man is having a hard time standing up on his own. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Pasta La Pizza. Happy Sunday. Have a great week. I'll be back next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to be um, moving on from dinosaurs. This is our last dinosaur live stream um, for a second. You know, we'll come back to it. But in the next week, we're going to be moving on to, uh, I think I'm going to be doing a treasure chest. Uh, this pattern will be coming out next week for membership uh for members so we'll be moving on to more animal crossing themed patterns and i thought because we're doing a little bell bag that's got gold and stuff in it we'll maybe be doing a treasure chest i'm not sure yet um but i'm thinking treasure chest so if you if you want to join into that live stream make sure uh to subscribe down below hit the bell icon and uh yeah i'll see you guys next sunday pasta la pizza guys thanks for joining